MGC can correct highly complex gradients like the ones in this image, taken from an area with a lot of light pollution. Although it was taken with narrowband filters, the effects of the light pollution are severe. Let's calibrate the flux first. It's a Hubble palette image, so we need to enable narrowband filters mode. In the red channel, we're going to put the sulfur 2 wavelength. In the green channel, we put the H alpha wavelength, and in the blue, the oxygen 3. And we leave the bandwidth for all three filters as 3 nanometers. Now we're going to correct the gradients using MGC. In the red channel, we select the H alpha band. In the green, H alpha 2. And in the blue, we select oxygen 3. Now we uncheck the Show Gradient Model box and apply the process with the default settings. As often happens with this type of image, although we've corrected the gradients, the result is not correct. Let's analyze the result in each channel. First, the red channel. Here, we're probably adding nebulous structures in H alpha, as we saw in the previous video. The best way to solve this problem with precision is to decrease the gradient scale. At this scale, it's clear that we're adding signal from the large structures in the H alpha emission. So let's decrease the scale factor until it stops affecting the nebula. The scale factor we need in this type of image is usually around 0.2. Let's move on to the green channel. Here we have some overcorrection. We can try to improve this by looking at the gradient model, but for now we're going to keep this option disabled. As there's some overcorrection, we're going to increase the scale factor. That looks good. And now the blue channel. The nebula is very faint in oxygen 3. Although it looks OK, let's try increasing the scale factor. In this case, we only need to find an approximate value because of the very weak signal in this nebula. This is with a gradient scale of 256 pixels. We need a very small scale to be able to correct the gradients in this image. If we use MGC's default scale of 1024 pixels, we won't be able to correct the gradients properly. With a scale of 256, only a few faint traces remain around the edges of the image. Here is another example, and this is an extreme case. This is a broadband image with a lot of light pollution. The flats haven't worked well at all, and dust motes have been left behind. Let's calibrate the flux first. It's a color sensor, so we'll use the default settings. Now we can correct the gradients using MGC. 
First, we'll try the default settings, but without showing the gradient model. As you can see, these gradients are very aggressive and complex. A gradient scale of 1024 pixels therefore doesn't completely correct this image. We're going to try something that we don't generally advise, using the lowest possible gradient scale of 128 pixels. Generally speaking, we should only use the smallest scales to check the scale factor. Using them is very risky because the objects will never be completely removed and more traces will remain. However, by using it in this image, we can correct all the gradients. This is the result with a gradient scale of 1024 pixels, and this is with 128 pixels. Now there are only a few slight traces of the edges of the dust motes. If we reapply the auto stretch, we can see that the gradient correction is almost perfect. Correcting the gradients with such a small scale is very risky, so we're going to try to minimize the traces of the galaxy. If we show the gradient model, we can see that there are quite a few traces. Let's analyze it channel by channel. In the red channel, at 1.3, the nucleus starts to appear inverted. 1.2 could be a good compromise. Let's move on to the green channel. At 1.4, the nucleus appears inverted. Let's set it to 1.3. And in the blue channel, we also need to increase the scale factor. 1.4 is too high. 1.2 is probably good. We're never going to completely eliminate all these galaxy structures, but don't forget that this area is where the galaxy is at its brightest. Proportionally, these traces therefore only represent a very small percentage of that brightness. We can try decreasing the structure separation, but we don't want to increase the model smoothness because our aim is to remove the edges of the shadow as much as we can. If we apply this correction now, there is barely any negative effect on the galaxy, but we've managed to eliminate these complex gradients.